So, we talked about uh, noise sources uh, in the laser and one source of noise we discussed was the intensity noise where the power fluctuates and we learned how to quantify the intensity noise and we said rin, relative intensity noise is one way of quantifying the intensity noise that is a common most common way of quantifying the intensity noise. We also said that that intensity noise is a function of frequency. So, the spectrum of RIN is what would matter because your bandwidth of the detector could be limited. So, you need to consider the noise only within the uh, bandwidth of the detector. The next source of noise that is relevant for phase modulated data mostly is uh, line width because of the phase noise. Okay. Now, uh, what exactly is phase noise? So, this is the output of a monochromatic ideal laser source which is emitting at a specific carrier frequency omega c and its phase is phi of t and what we are saying is that this phase is a function of time and that delta phi of t the changes the, the, the so there is a uh, bias phase or a constant phase which could be phi naught uh, which could be 0, but there are fluctuations about it and this delta phi these fluctuations lead to uh, phase noise this is what we are referring to as phase noise. But the consequence of phase noise is also that my instantaneous frequency uh, which is the derivative of this phi of t it is derivative of sorry derivative of the total phase. So, if I do a time derivative of omega c t plus phi of t what I end up getting is omega c plus d phi by d t and because there is a phi which is a function of time I have frequency changing with respect to time okay. and how do we now quantify this right. So, it is interesting that these phase fluctuations these are 0 mean Gaussian random variable right. In the time domain it is a Gaussian if you do the histogram of all the variations it is Gaussian and uh, mean is 0 it is fluctuating about this phi naught. So, how do I find the frequency spectrum of this? So, essentially you can think of this as a phi of t which is now in the time domain having a uh, Gaussian uh, random variable uh, behavior Gaussian behavior. Essentially it means that if I have a phi naught and if I have a way to measure this phi uh, of t this deviations with respect to phi naught these could look like these deviations let us say I sample and I at different points I am measuring this t. Uh, measuring the delta phi naught what I would end up is having a histogram like this if I take the histogram like this that histogram is Gaussian that is what this means. So, if you want to know what is the uh, frequency response of this uh, uh, behavior what you need to do is you want to find the frequency spectrum we did this for RIN also the frequency spectrum is nothing but the uh, power spectral density of the autocorrelation function. So, you have to do an autocorrelation of this assuming that this phi of t is a Gaussian variable and that turns out to be a, a, a Lorentzian spectrum. So, essentially what I am trying to say is that if I have E of t electric field which is having a phase which has a Gaussian distribution I do an autocorrelation of this and I do the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function I get the power spectral density and because this is a Gaussian random variable all the processes that I am talking about can be analytically solved and it will turn out that if I do the power spectral density it will come out to be a Lorentzian function. Okay. So, if I have delta phi of t changing with time as a Gaussian random variable the 
power spectral density of the autocorrelation, the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function will turn out to be a Lorentzian and it is going to look like this. Okay. So, this is the Lorentzian spectrum and this is just a mathematical consequence. If I have e power j phi with where phi is a Gaussian random variable, if I do an autocorrelation and do a Fourier transform, the answer is a Lorentzian. Okay. And in that Lorentzian, the 3 dB bandwidth of that Lorentzian function is what we call as the line width of the laser. One thing to remember again, this line width is a, a co concept that is relevant for a single longitudinal mode laser. Because if there are multiple longitudinal modes supported, then you know you are talking about the, the line width concept does not have any relevance. Now, this delta f is what is measurable. Why am I interested in quantifying this delta? This de phi of t, this Gaussian random variable, uh, uh, you know, is not exactly a measurable quantity. If you were to measure this, you have to measure the phase of the monochromatic beam at every instant of time, construct my uh, series and then do the Gaussian statistics and so on. That is not an easily measurable quantity. What is easily measurable is the spectrum of the laser, right? which is why we are trying to relate the phase noise with the spectrum of the laser. Okay? So, delta f is what is quantifying the variance of the phase fluctuations these phase fluctuations, the variance, we will talk about this variance in a minute, but what we need to understand is that it is the delta phi that is available as a number in the data sheet for the laser, sorry delta f is a number that is available in the data sheet and that delta f helps us to quantify what is a phase fluctuation. Okay? And typical line widths of communication grade lasers are anywhere between tens of kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz. And last week we talked about why this phase noise is a number that is uh, we, we need to worry about phase noise because when the phase fluctuates whenever we are trying to do a phase modulation the constellation spreads. So, that is why we are interested to know what the phase noise is or that is why we are interested to quantify the phase noise. Now, how do you quantify the uh, you know phase fluctuations how do you so essentially what we want to quantify is delta f with uh, sigma uh, or with, with delta phi. You want to get a relation between the delta f and delta phi. Delta f is my line width which is a measurable quantity and delta phi is the phase fluctuations. Okay. So, what we do is like what I said earlier, let us say we have a method to calculate delta phi of t as a function of time. Okay. Uh, essentially, I am trying to uh, imagine that I am able to calculate delta phi as a function of time. So, there is some base phase phi naught. So, I am not worried about phi naught here, but there is this delta phi may uh, change randomly with time. So, this phi I am now trying to find out the phase difference in a time interval tau. So, I am taking a time interval. Uh, Okay. I am interested in a time interval tau and within that I am trying to find out what is delta phi in that time interval tau okay. and I am defining this as phi n t minus phi n t minus tau the difference between the phase phase. Now, this n just represents that you sampled it. Okay. This n is just to say that it is a discrete time variable now you have sampled it at uh, different uh, values of time. right? So, now as my tau changes, my delta phi keeps changing. Okay, as my tau changes, my delta phi keeps changing because I may be accumulating different phase. Uh, mind you, this is just a representation, it is not going to actually look like this. Okay, this is just to give a visual picture of what is going on. Now, I can define what is called as a phase error variance. Okay. This is the variance of the phase error. Why do you call this as phase error? This is what I am calling as phase error. Why do I call it as a phase error? I call it as a phase error because ideally this phi n at t must have been equal to phi n at t minus tau. 
at every point the phase must have been the same there should not have been time varying phase. So, which is why I am calling it as phase error. Okay. So, this is my phase error and this is now a statistical quantity this one. The variance of this quantity is what is called as a phase error variance. All right. So, I do a mean square value of such phase differences and that is what I am calling it as phase error variance. Okay. Now, we are trying to get a connect between phase error. So, physically what does it mean? It means that over this time interval tau, I have phase fluctuations and the variance of those phase, phase fluctuations is my phase error variance. Okay. So, if I were to do a, a, a distribution of you know histogram of those phase errors, there is a variance, there is a distribution of that and the variance of that distribution is my phase error variance. Now, the point is how do I now relate it to, so this is this is going to tell me some kind of a um, distribution of the error that I will have. If I had transmitted a certain constellation, this is going to tell me what is that spread in that constellation. Okay. Now, the job is to connect it to the line width of the laser. Okay. So, we are not deriving all this, but what we need to understand or uh, it, it can be derived that this phase error variance is related to the line width as this. This is our nice holy relation. The sigma tau square is 2 pi delta f tau, which means that if delta f is let us say line width of the laser and let us say this is 1 megahertz, the variance in the phase error is 2 pi times delta f times tau. Now, what is this tau? Tau is the duration in which I am making the observation. It simply means that as my duration of observation is very large, the phase has drifted by a large number, there is a large phase error. Okay. If my duration of observation is very small, it means that if I am if, if I am observing the sinusoid from the laser uh, over uh, sorry, this is a sinusoid from the laser over a small duration there is not much phase fluctuation, but somewhere down the line somewhere there are these this fluctuations happening. If I observe over a large duration of time the phase error variance starts increasing and phase error variance it is a very nice linear relation as a function of tau or this is a characteristic of the statistics by which the laser phase evolves. Okay. Now, the question is how is it going to affect my communication system. So, what is tau as far as my communication system is concerned? Let us say I do phase modulation and we are worried with the ambiguity that the laser phase itself has changed and when I am phase modulating the laser phase should not change, it should change only based on the modulating signal, but right now we are talking about the laser phase changing by itself. So, what is this tau as far as a communication system is concerned? So, if you remember how we do phase modulation you had this sinusoid and you said that during a symbol duration, so let us say this is my symbol duration, this is not to scale of course, right? Uh, this is my symbol duration and my 1 I represent as a 0 phase and 0 I represent as a phi pa, uh, pi phase. Let us say I do this kind of modulation, it is a BPSK modulation let us say I am doing. What is my time of interest now? What is the time duration of interest now? 1 symbol, within 1 symbol the phase should not have changed, no that is also not correct because I am symbol boundaries I am looking for a phase change. So, it is not just enough to maintain the phase within one symbol, you are going to find the phase of this with respect to the previous symbol. right? So, between uh, second symbol and the first symbol, I should not have the laser phase changed by itself. So, in general I can say that I what is of interest is my symbol duration, yes, 
but I want to maintain the phase over several simple durations, not just one simple duration. Okay. So, sigma phi t, where t represents my simple duration now. Of course, this quantifies the noise in a simple duration. This is where we are making the connection now. So, if I know my uh, laser line width is 1 megahertz, I can now find out how much is the error in my phase over one simple duration and I can demand that over let us say 100 simple durations, 1000 simple durations, I will tell you how to, de how to demand that. Okay. I can now say that my phase fluctuations should not be greater than a certain number. 